Okay, so we're all set up for cutting the profile of the half hour wheel. I've got the brass loaded up on the CNC machine. We've got the overall image created in VCAV. And then over to Mac 3, we're all ready to think to hit go. Um, so we've got the blank. We're going to get this out now. Now, obviously, a lot of you will be shouting that I've done this the wrong way round and I've uh, crossed out, which is obviously reduced the strength of the wheel. So we're going to put this on a backing plate. Um, I've done this before and it's worked okay, but never with a wheel this big. So we're going to whack this on an aluminium backing plate, get it all nice and uh, centred and round, and then uh, put it on the on the mill to cut the teeth. So I'm just going to make the arbor now turning down some steel so it'll fit in the R32 collet and then the other end you'll go the wheel blank. Okay so we've swapped over to the ER32 collet chuck um, and this fits on the uh, rotary table with a little bit more room um, and we've just mounted up our piece of steel and then we're going to turn the 8mm end uh, and thread that 8mm as well that's going to accept the aluminium and then the brass uh, plate or the brass blank as well. <laughs> I don't like this oil, I think it's running a bit hot. Just hand turning this uh, large thread, this large M8 thread on here and it's uh, pretty tough. I don't know how people do these big threads in steel sometimes, certainly with a, with a die. The thread is forming anyway, so all good. So I've just done that off camera, but that's the uh, ow hot. <laughs> that's the uh, inner disc. Uh, sorry, the outer disc, uh, the smaller disc uh, cut. So we're going to chuck up now the other piece. Turn that roughly to size. That's going to be the full backing disc. This is almost the washer, if you like. All right. Well, that's the arrangement for the discs. So you've got the back plate, the cut wheel. And then this uh, front aluminium disc, which is just gripping the circumference um, of that outer rim. Just enough so stop it moving when we cut gears. And then, of course, the backing place is sacrificial and we'll cut straight through that. So one thing I didn't mention is that when I cut the clock wheel, I actually left this uh, a little bit oversized. So we can now true up the aluminium wheel and true up the brass wheel as well. in South Carolina, Matt Okay, so just a little break on looking at clock wheel cutters. Um, as I post more videos, I get more questions come through, more emails, more comments on the website, uh, just asking about uh, wheel cutters. And it's come up twice now, literally in the last week, um, people buying in volute cutters. Um, and it's worth pointing at this moment now that it is a cycloidal cutter profile that you want if you are cl cutting clock um, wheels so it's a s opinions for that matter as well sadly I've not got a, a smaller example but this is an example of an involute form so that is an involute cutter that's just a huge bore in the middle they don't necessarily come like that some of them come with very small bores just like the clock wheel cutters you can see in the background but you do not want an involute form that will not work for clocks. You can have a look, you can read up about it. Many people have tried, including myself, 20 years ago and failed. So that is the involute cutter. Um, if you are going to buy a commercial cutter, and I hope somebody can prove me wrong here and post in the comments if you can, these PP Thornton cutters are absolutely fantastic, but they are the only commercial cutters that I can find readily, readily available in the UK. I can't even see anything cheaper overseas as well. So this is PP Thornton Cutter. These are about 80 to 120 pounds. And sadly for every module cutter you need, so this is a 0.8 module, you need a wheel cutter. And then if you're gonna cut pinions, you need various, various cutters for the pinion counts as well so essentially for every module i think it's about eight or nine cutters that you need for a complete set 
on an 80 to 120 pound that is not cheap but again if anyone can prove me wrong and post somebody that's making these commercially at a cheaper price please let me know however if you are getting into clock making honestly these are absolutely fantastic they're super sharp cut through brass easily the pinion cutters cut the pinion no problem providing you've got a good setup um, but they're fantastic cutters to use and then just a little bit of information um, you can also find some people that have made home homemade cutters um, so this is my late friend Phil um, and he used a CNC machine to profile some little buttons so he profiled these little buttons on his machine so there's the profile that he made and then he ran the blank through the profile. I don't know whether this is specifically the one. Um, no, it's not the specifically the one, but he ran the button through the profile to cut the profile. Um, and then obviously took some clearance as well off the back on his grinder as well. So there are my methods of making homemade ones. That's a homemade multi-point multi, -tool, multi, multi um, cutter and a very more common thing to see is this sort of thing which is like a simple a single point cutter as well so there's plenty of ways of making homemade ones although i'll be honest with you i've never been overly successful making single point cutters if i'm going to build a clock i've tended to go nowadays with the commercial cutter even though i like trying to build everything right from scratch myself i still use the commercial cutters okay just in terms of the arbors that we're holding them on uh, if we're doing small wheels and I'm using thorns and cutters, then I can hold them on something as simple as that, just to turn down. If I want a little bit more rigidity, um, then something, a cutter arbor like this is much better. So obviously this is a bit overly chunky, but um, this sort of idea where you've got your threaded uh, onto your flat, and then a washer to hold everything true, and then you cut, I don't know whether I'm putting that in the right orientation, but then your cutter, and then another undercut washer and then obviously a bolt in between and something like that is incredibly sturdy when it comes i've put the on the wrong way around but it's incredibly sturdy when it comes to cutting all right well let's we're going to put this on the right way around tighten it all up and then get this cutting on the mill so we've got this all set up now we've got the wheel blank uh, mounted running true we've got the cutter centered See a couple of witness marks here. Um, this is just to get the centre height of the cutter. When I first started this many years ago, I really struggled getting the perfect centre height. If you don't get absolute spot on centre, you start having your teeth leaning over a little bit. Um, so one person, rather than trying all the different measuring ways, one nice way of doing it is to make a witness mark. And certainly on this uh, example, because we've got this nice big washer at the front, we can actually move our witness marks on the washer. Normally I have to mark the edge of the uh, brass disc, the blank a little bit. Make a witness mark. Um, then turn your uh, rotator, your dividing head, sorry, um, 180 degrees, and then come back on this side and check that the witness mark is still on the cutter tip. And if it's still on the cutter tip, then you've definitely got it um, centered. And what's also nice about this method is that if it's not on center, in actual fact, you can see whether you're high or low, you can try and hit the middle. And uh, normally after a few tries, you can get it spot on. So I find this way now better than uh, any other method measuring it so the next step we've got to do now is check that we get in the right depth um, so I'm going to keep sticking my head I do find it difficult on this uh, on the mill rather than the lathe because you can't actually see you've got to stick your head right behind but I'm going to basically cut between two teeth one tooth second tooth and keep going backwards and forwards until we've just got a slither of blue there i.e that we've created the very tip of the tooth I'm going to then lock the table up and then cut the rest of the wheel so that's what we're going to try and do now anyway Okay, we have another 238 to go. Okay, well, I think it's time to have a look.
it looks pretty good just gonna have to uh, clean it up bit of a burr on some of the backs so uh, i'll clean that up now and then we'll have a proper look at it well that seems to have worked out really well there's the uh, wheel and uh, i'll take some pictures and insert them of the teeth but come out nice teeth are straight crossing out on the CNC machine was nice so give me a bit of confidence now to uh, go on to the great wheel which is 204 teeth uh, module 6 and just a half inch uh, greater in full diameter all right thank you again for watching see you next time